Ark Survival Ascended has taken the Ark community by storm for the past few days. There's been a lot of rant about the game's performance, about the dedicated server situation, but today I'm not talking about that. I'm gonna talk about the top 10 most important changes in Ark Survival Ascended. Because there have been a lot of changes, some more important than others. For example, the entrance to the snow cave has been modified, and now you can access the cave with mounts up to the baryonyx. Will this change affect your gameplay in any way? Probably not. But these next 10 will. First, one of the basics. The torch can now be placed on your belt. This is a welcome change as it basically allows you to do stuff during the night, like collecting resources or even fighting something. Admittedly, it's in a weird position, though probably anywhere you put it other than your hand will look weird and uncomfortable. Creatures have received quite a few changes, and probably this is the coolest. Wild dinos can have babies. Now, apart from the obvious cuteness factor, they can be useful as well, since they can be claimed once you kill or tame their mother. You can also imprint them like you would do with any other babies. But why isn't this higher on the list? Well, mainly because I haven't been able to find any Rex or UT babies in the wild which probably means only some of the creatures can have wild babies. I've seen wild baby brontos, but no big carnivores. I really hope Garuga adds baby dinos to Ark additions. I would love to see and tame baby dinotheriums. Next we have one regarding weapons. You can now change your ammo and even attachments on the fly. Simply hold down R and boom, a wheel where you can select your preferred ammo will pop up. You can even craft ammo if you run out of it and you have the resources in this menu. And this is how it looks for firearms, where you can swap attachments. The next change is more for the PvP players, but it could be useful for PvE as well, when you inevitably get stuck somewhere. You can now respawn using your implant. Simply hover over your implant until the safety timer goes away and click respawn. This can get you out of a cage if you get trapped by an enemy tribe. Next, this is one of my favorites, and it's regarding buildings. Now, the build system has received a lot of positive changes, like having several similar structures mashed into a single structure and being able to select which one you want to build. And we'll see another one later on the list. But what I'm talking about now is that if you pick up or destroy a structure that is required to support other structures, they will also get picked up or destroyed giving you the resources back. This is an insanely good change for the builders out there who like to create new stuff and they have to readjust the building. I absolutely hated when I picked up the wrong wall and everything got destroyed, with no resources being saved. Some creatures have also had a bit of a reward. The Oviraptor and the Dung Beetle are now even more useful. First, the Oviraptor can now pick up eggs on its own. I know for sure you've missed plenty of eggs in your egg farm, but now the Oviraptor will handle that for you. Just make sure it's unwandering. In similar fashion, the Dung Beetle now collects poop on its own. This is great since it will keep the production of fertilizer and oil going even if you forget to give your beetle new poop to work with. Once again, make sure it's wandering and enjoy. The combat system has also been changed a bit, because now the melee attacks will receive hitbox multipliers, and that counts for tames too. Basically, your Rex can headshot now. That's pretty insane if you ask me. That might not be a feature, it might be a bug, but this works both ways, and now trikes are a much better choice for melee fights. Honestly, if I think about it now, as a trike rider you can 1v1 a lot of things now, as long as you can avoid being outplanned. It might be even a decent boss fighting dino, we'll have to try that out. For the next change, I'm gonna mesh the waypoint system and the reward tracking system into one entry. You can now track a lot of creatures, tamed or knocked out. Obviously, this helps a lot when you cannot find one of your tames, or a knocked out wild creature. But if you lose yourself instead of a creature, you can now use waypoints to guide you to the desired location. Excellent quality of life feature. By the way, you can also use pings now, to better coordinate with your tribe mates. Bonus change, the map also now displays your coordinates by default. That means the compass and the GPS are no longer in the game, thank god. 
which means no more of those trashy double GPS blueprint supply drops. In similar fashion, the days where you would get stone pipes from drops are also gone, since both the water system and the electrical system have been reworked. You now only need a water intake, which will provide irrigation in an area around the intake. This area can be extended using water reservoirs. Similar, the generators now work without wiring, and they provide power in an area around them, just like the tech generator. Now, I've got a bonus change for you that could have been the number one on the list. Saddles have durability now. This would imply that your saddle, once broken, wouldn't provide any more armor to your mount. This would be a huge change in PvP. The already expensive Ascended saddles would have an insane repair cost, and who knows, maybe primitive saddles might not be enough to fight bosses anymore. So why is this not on the list? Well, because currently the durability does nothing. It doesn't work. Personally, I think it's bugged, so I cannot say for sure how this is supposed to work. And probably the most important change, especially for PvP, is how the mutations work now. As you can see here, using the tech binoculars, we can see all the points of a dino in each stat. The first are the base points, second mutations, and third the level points. Previously, we had to first find the perfect base stats and then start mutating on top of that. Not anymore. Let's say we now have a Sarko with 38 base points in health and another with 18 base health and 3 more mutations on health. In Ascended, it is possible for your babies to get the 38 base points of one parent and the mutation on top of that from the other parent. This is very helpful for breeders since now you can start breeding for mutations earlier and then find or breed the dino with the perfect base stats. And there you have it guys, the 10 most important changes in Ark Survival Ascended. Do you think I've missed any game breaking change? Tell me in the comments. And if you want more Ascended into your life, check out my new playthrough series. Hey, I'm not saying that the new and improved loot drop system is the most important change in Ascended. But for those of you who have stayed until the end of this video, I advise you to go ahead and grab as many loots as you can before they nerf them. Until next time, Spartacus out.